Welcome to Becoming Civilized. Hopefully you'll find something useful in here. Today we're going to talk about the relationship of Revit and Civil 3D. Have you ever wondered why Revit and Civil 3D don't play well together? Or why civil engineers just don't model in Revit? Well, I'll attempt to answer those questions, but first let's start off talking about a little history about each program. Revit was a child born in the mid-80s when Nintendo gave us the first adventure of those Italian plumber brothers. Revit started in the UK and was originally called Sonata Martin Tower BIM Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. It was created by Jonathan Ingram. He designed this program for architects and engineers. It incorporated the basic building information modeling concepts. In a way, he was one of the BIM's founding fathers. Sonata Martin Tower, BIM Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow, was eventually sold to a Canadian company called Alias, and Dr. Ingram went on to write Reflex. Reflex was acquired in 1996 by Parametric Technologies and renamed it to Pro Reflex. Dr. Ingram was appointed Chief Technology Officer of Parametric Technologies at the time, and this software had most of the main features that still exist in Revit today. In 2000, the company was renamed Revit Technologies Corporation, and on April 5th, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the first version of Revit 1.0 was released. It was first offered as a software lease, and you could not buy it. Revit was also the second parametric building modeler specifically designed for the AEC industry. The Revit name is an invented word designed to imply revision and speed. Since their original name idea, Perspective, was taken by a spec application, they hired a public communications consultant to assist in developing a name. Revit won out over a number of other proposals, including Archadia and Estuary, and many others. Its technology offered the model concept with an easy-to-use platform designed to enable architects, engineers, and contractors to do life cycle planning for building projects. Revit's intelligent design environment encouraged design revisions because there was real-time synchronization of the documentation. Autodesk purchased the Massachusetts-based Revit Technology Corporation for $103 million U.S. in 2002. The purchase allowed more research, development, and improvements of the software, and you can read more about that on Wikipedia. Civil 3D was also a child of the mid-80s, when a group of developers called David C. Arnold and Associates created a host of macros and routines that assisted with civil engineering tasks. In 1990, DCA renamed the program to ADCAD Civil Survey. Then the following year, renamed it again to Softdesk Civil Survey. In 1997, it was purchased by Autodesk for $72 million, and after one release, it was renamed to Land Development Desktop, which was built on MAP3D and AutoCAD 14, and known as LDD for short. In 2001, the development was dropped from the name, becoming Land Desktop which was comprised of MAP5, AutoCAD 2002, Civil Design 3, Survey 3, OnSite 6, and Raster Design, which was also known as the Autodesk Civil Series. Then in 2005, Autodesk made a bold move and introduced a civil engineering 3D modeling software called Civil 3D. This software engine was different than all the products before because this was not acquired. Its engine kernels were written by Autodesk programmers. Mimicking tools from LAN Desktop, Civil 3D introduced dynamically linked objects to show instant changes to a model when an edit operation was performed. LAN Desktop was included alongside Civil 3D until 2011 when it was officially retired. Revit and Civil 3D's relationship started off as the perfect romance. They enjoyed walks on the circuit board together, and sharing their appetite for processor speed, Civil 3D and Revit had such a beautiful relationship. Oh wait, these two have never played well together. Their relationship is more like oil and water. No matter how quickly you stir them together, they will never become one liquid. Why is this? Well, let's start off by talking about how each program works. Revit objects are parametric. And you're probably thinking, what does that really mean? It means that the objects are intelligent 3D objects to represent real physical building components, such as walls, windows, doors, stairs. You get the idea. These objects can interact with each other and know what they are. I mean, in Revit, you can't use a stair for a window. However, in Civil 3D, it contains objects that are not parametric, with the exception of pipes and structures. So what are they? Well, think of lines that have different elevations at each vertex. You can change the fixed points along the line to whatever you want. And by using multiple lines offset, then you start making up curbs, gutters, grade bricks, building pads, berms, retaining walls, you get the idea. But overall, they're still just lines with points. Civil 3D uses these 3D break lines to create a surface called a TIN, or Triangular Irregular Network. The process goes two points make a line, and three points make a triangle. 
and a triangle makes a surface mesh or a spider web. Once you have this surface, you can perform various style changes to extract objects like contours, grids, points, and a few other analysis options. So what does this mean? Well, it means, unlike Revit, these object lines and points don't know if they're a curve or retaining wall. Compared to parametric objects, these three lines and points have a kind of identity crisis and aren't even intelligently linked to each other. What do I mean by that? Maybe if you change an elevation on one of the lines on the curb, like say the flow line, you still have to change the top of curb or the back of curb and the gutter lip, all independently. One exception would be corridors, but we won't get into them right now. They can be a little bit of an overkill to set up and maintain for a simple on-site modeling project. One wish I have is that feature lines can be constrained to each other, like using the basic AutoCAD constraints on polylines. That would make it much easier. To sum it up, Revit and Civil 3D are two completely different types of modeling programs, but you already knew that, so let's get to the meat of this presentation. So almost daily I get asked questions like, what do pipes look like? Why can't Civil just model in Revit? What can we export from Civil 3D? What can Revit import? Can we use Revit add-ons like SiteWorks? Can Civil 3D bring in the Revit model? How can you bring the two models together? We will go through each one of these briefly, but first I must stress the project base point and shared coordinates. Please coordinate this point before trying to import any of these objects or models. You will make your life less difficult. We are creating a video on shared coordinates and check out on Autodesk Labs. Look for the BIM coordinator tool. What do pipes look like? Pipes. Here's an image of what they look like in Civil 3D and here's an image of the same pipes in Revit. This is the one object that can translate visually over, but note, all intelligent pipe data will be lost. No inverts, no pipe sizes, slopes, etc. Also make sure that the pipe model in Civil 3D has nothing floating around the drawing or you will get the 20 mile error when trying to bring it into Revit. This has to be the question I get the most. Why can't Civil just model in Revit? Well, the short answer is a couple of reasons. Complex surface loops, various calculations and analysis tools, large project sites, world coordinates, and try imagining if every floor, roof, window, door, and stair that you had had different slopes and angles to them. That would be a lot of angles. Could you imagine how big your file would be? What can we expect from Civil 3D and what can Revit import? Well, Civil 3D can extract contours, grids, points, and or pipes, but none of these will give you the level of detail, or LOD, that you are looking for and Civil 3D can't model the type of objects that you're thinking that it can do. There are no solid objects, which means you will not see curbs, retaining walls, gutters, etc. Can we use Revit add-ons like SiteWorks? Yes, but only for visual representation. It is a really nice software that uses mass objects like Revit to create site features like curbs, gutters, retaining walls, roads, etc. It can take some finessing to just get your surface from Civil 3D in, and you have to recreate everything you already modeled in Civil 3D. It does not take break lines or feature lines in. It will take a land XML file, but it will not hold those lines. I'm 100% sure that this is what Revit users wish Civil 3D would produce. My prediction is that Civil 3D will grow up, and it too will start to have smarter objects that represent their real-world counterparts like Revit. How long will this take? Within the next decade is my best guess, but who really knows? Right now, Civil 3D can run corridors, which is kind of like projecting a detail down a specific alignment. These work great for streets and highways, but are not practical for site development because of all the various components that go into making them. Autodesk would need to simplify the corridor process first. The day that you can run a corridor down just a feature line without having to create an alignment and a profile would be a great day. A feature line already contains all of this information. Once this happens, you will see them used more on on-site design. The one nice feature about corridors is you can extract them as a solid object and transfer them over to Revit. Next question. Can Civil 3D bring in a Revit model? After asking yourself that question, you need to ask yourself, why? Yes, you can bring it in, but you will regret it. You can export an ADSK file or a 3D DWG file from Revit and import into Civil 3D. These files will bog down your DWG's performance, so use them sparingly. Even the simplest of Revit files can bog down the performance of AutoCAD or Civil 3D. 
If you need it for rendering or coordination, there are better, simpler programs for that like Navisworks, 360 Glue, and 3D Studio Max. How can we bring the two models together? Navisworks. This is the current industry standard to bring it all together. A very simple to use interface and highly useful collision detection tools help all consultants find issues before the project is built. From my experience using the shared coordinates when exporting a NWC file from Revit makes it a snap to align and collaborate with the Navisworks. So I will stress that again. Please set the coordination tool and the shared coordinates before you start any of these projects or putting these models together. Now if you're looking for a show-stopping rendering or animation, then you need to use 3D Studio Max. This software is also parametric based and works nicely with Revit. As for Civil 3D or AutoCAD, sometimes there are a few extra steps you have to take in order to prepare your models to make the transfer to Max. Civil 3D has a site tool called Civil View that can help you bring across surfaces and corridors. There are a few tutorials on that subject on YouTube if you want to try them out. But if you just want a sample of what Max can accomplish, then I will leave you with this link for a video from Autodesk. Well, I hope we've helped answer some of those questions you had. If you have any more, feel free to email me at becomingcivilized at gmail or just make a comment under this video. Thanks for watching. Please like us and share this video.